without my fear, my faith, or my wisdom. You might see me talking, but is it even worth me living? If I ain't got fear, or faith, or religion, it's the end of the beginning. And my soul's been taken, all this time I thought I was winning. Now I'm going through registration, will my name be called by the one who rose, or by the one... Yet we are ready to condemn our Muslim brothers across the world based upon some things the media tell us. This is very dangerous. You know, the best thing to do is just keep quiet. Is to keep quiet. Not to involve ourselves because we have enough problems right here in our locality, right in front of us, we have to solve these problems. We have enough work to do right here without worrying about what's going on everywhere else. So it's very important, you know, that we shouldn't backbite. I wonder how many people even know what is the definition of backbiting in Islam. Most Muslims, I found they don't, they, they think backbiting, and I'm talking about uh, particularly, you know, people brought up here, right? So they know what the English word backbiting means, right? So Namima is backbiting, right? But we in English we call it backbiting. But in English, backbiting means, you know what? I talk about you when you're not around. You know, I say things behind your back. But in Islam, the, the definition of backbiting is much stronger than that. It's more specific. It's saying something about your Muslim brother that he wouldn't like. Or your Muslim sister that he wouldn't like. So if you say something, and it doesn't even, by the way, have to be a word. You could backbite with a sign. Just by signing. By making an indication. Right? Just by making an indication. That, that's enough. For example, I, I think it was Aisha, she made a, an indication about some, one of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was she was very so, short. And Aisha made, she made an indication about her size. Something, I, this is how I remember it. And the Prophet said, Aisha, you did something that if it was turned into something physical, it would have corrupted the earth. Just by making a sign. Because she wouldn't have liked that. Now, that's saying something true. Backbiting is when you say something true about your Muslim brother that he wouldn't like, or she, your sister, Muslim sister, that she wouldn't like. And it's true. If it's true, it's backbiting. And what is backbiting? Backbiting is being, it's been mentioned that the, it is the equivalent of eating the flesh of your dead brother. Can you imagine? A Muslim was dead and you were eating their flesh. This is backbiting. It's a major sin in Islam. Major sin. A kabair. It's a major sin in Islam. Backbiting. And if you say something that is a lie, then it is slander. Slander is even worse than backbiting. Slander is worse. And why are these things so bad? Because they create division, they create hatred, they create suspicion. So it's not even allowed. Check this out, brothers and sisters, please. It's not even allowed to have a bad suspicion about your Muslim brother. Do you know that? Even to think something bad, to think your brother is cheating, or to think your brother is stealing, or to think your brother is doing something bad, even to think it is haram. Having suspicions, bad suspicions, is haram. The only suspicion you are allowed to have is a good suspicion. 
So when Allah mentions in the Quran, some suspicions are bad, it means the suspicions that are allowed are the ones that are good. It's, and the Prophet said, it's the worst form of lying. Suspicions are the worst form of lying. Whether it is your wife, whether it is your friends, whether it is your children, having suspicions is haram in Islam. You need to think good things. Have a good opinion. Have host, Make excuses. for your, Even if you see something wrong, make excuses. This is Islam. Because this is part of love. Or if you see something, then you, you advise your brother, you advise your sister lovingly, kindly, in a beautiful way that they will accept it. Not, not certainly never trying to humiliate them in front of everybody. This, this is, can you see if we only followed these things, how the, these are the practical teachings about love. This is the practical teaching about love. Love one another, but here is the practicality. How we should love one another. By making excuses for your Muslim brother and sister. We must make those excuses. This is Islam. And you know as the saying goes, you make 70 excuses. And if you can't find an excuse, then blame yourself. How you can't find 70? You can't find an excuse? Maybe he's this, maybe he's that, maybe she's this, maybe, you know, subhanAllah, you can find so many excuses. Well, the funny thing is, when it comes to you, you have a hundred excuses for yourself. <laughs> Even when you're doing something, ah, oh, but you know, brother, you have to understand, you know, I, it was like this, it was like that, it was like, mashallah, you'll come up with, you think of so even their lies, you'll still come up with the excuses. But when it comes to someone else, no. It's the opposite, you want to think of how many bad things you can think about your Muslim brother. And this is just not Islam. Now really in reality, this, this akhlaq we should extend to everybody. Really. Even the Prophet ﷺ, he used to give this type of excuses even subhanAllah to the munafiks, the munafiku. Abdullah ibn, Abdullah ibn Ubay was the leader of the hypocrites. Was it Ubay?